Hello guys, I am Anurag and I am doing my B.Tech in Chemical Engineering from Vishweshwaraya National Institute of Technology, Nagpur. Today, I am here to tell you the importance of chemical engineers in our day-to-day -day lives. We use many devices like laptops, mobiles, trimmers, hair dryers and many other devices every day. You know one thing, all these devices work with the help of batteries. These batteries are manufactured by chemical engineers where they take into consideration the thermodynamics, kinetic of the reactions, the transfer of ions and electrons. They perform numerous experiments and computer simulations in order to obtain the ionic and electronic transfer properties in the battery components. Now my friend Sanjay will enlighten you on the types of batteries. There are mainly two types of chemical batteries. Number one is primary cell or non-rechargeable battery. Number two is secondary cell or rechargeable battery. A primary cell is a battery that cannot be reused. It cannot be recharged for further use. Now let us see about the working of a primary cell. These are the chemical reactions involved in the working of a zinc carbon cell. In this cell, carbon rod acts as a cathode which is surrounded by paste of carbon powder and magnesium oxide while zinc acts as the anode. The second type of batteries are the secondary cells or rechargeable batteries. These type of batteries can be recharged by passing an electric current in the opposite direction of the discharge current and can be brought back to their original condition. Some of the examples of these rechargeable batteries are flow battery, lead acid battery which is used in cars, the lithium ion battery, magnesium ion battery and many other. The lithium ion battery is vastly used in mobile phones, laptops and other devices. Now I am going to tell you about the electrode, electrolyte present in the lithium ion battery, the working reactions, working cell reactions at the cathode and anode and the manufacture of lithium ion battery. This is the basic structure of a lithium ion cell. Commonly the anode material used is a form of carbon, for example graphite and the cathode is a lithium metal oxide like lithium manganese dioxide or lithium cobalt dioxide. The electrolyte used is a mixture of lithium salts and the most popular electrolyte is lithium hexafluorophosphate. The cell reactions involved are as shown. During discharging, the lithium ions move from negative electrode to the positive electrode and while charging the lithium ions move from the positive electrode to the negative electrode. In electrode coating, the first stage is to mix the electrode materials with a conductive binder to form a slurry which is spread on the surface of the foil as it passes into the machine. In coating, a knife edge is located just above the foil and the thickness of the electrode coating is controlled by adjusting the gap between the knife edge and the foil. In compressing, the thickness of the coating layers must be set to allow the energy storage per unit area of the anode and cathode electrodes to be matched. In drying, the coated foils are fed into drying oven to bake electrode material onto the foil. The coated foils are subsequently fed into slitting machines to cut the foil into narrower strips suitable for different sizes of electrodes. The second major step is the cell assembly. In cell assembly, the first stage is the assembly process is to build the electrode sub-assembly in which the separator is sandwiched between the anode and the cathode. They are then stacked and kept apart by a separator. These stacked electrodes layers are put in a case. Terminals of the electrode structure are connected together with safety devices and the sub-assembly is inserted into a can and then sealed or welded. Then the cell is filled with electrolyte and sealed away, which is carried in a dry room to remove moisture. The cell is given identification with a label or by printing seal number on case. The third step in the manufacture of batteries is formation, where the cell must be put through one precisely controlled charge and discharge cycle to activate the working. Fourth step is process control, where the contamination, physical damage and the burns on the electrode are checked. The fifth and the final step is support service, where the cleanliness is essential to prevent contamination.